Oh, come on. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. But badass, man. I'm reviewing a movie based on RoboCop. You should totally make an appearance. Say, what? The Depths of Hell? Oh, the Nordic Underworld Hell. Fighting armies of the undead. With your long-lost parents. No, I, I can't beat that. It's a, it's a Godfrey Hill movie. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matthew. Sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew really dragged himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode, Robo Vampire. <sighs> Hello Ed209, I'm called Mr. Kenny. And welcome back to Matt's Fun Time Mad Movie Show, where today we're diving back into the very odd world of foreign knockoffs. I'll give some of these ripoffs credit. Both Lady Terminator and Robo Vampire are kind of interesting spins on what they're ripping off. Far more so than fucking Terminator 2 Shocking Dark. This film comes to us from Hong Kong and dropped just one year after Robocop. And it's from one of Hong Kong's most infamous directors, Godfrey Ho. IMDB says he's directed 150 movies, although he's probably directed closer to 100. See, Ho liked to take his old movies, shoot scenes that have nothing to do with the original plot, and release it as a new movie. He's like the original Daddy Derek. Luckily, it seems Robo Vampire is one of his more original movies, although Amazon Prime seems to have a movie called Robo Vampire 3, which is another Godfrey Ho film, The Vampire is Still Alive, which uses tons of footage from this movie. Although Robo Vampire 2 seems to be a genuine sequel. It stars some no-name Chinese actors, and good luck figuring out who plays whom because IMDB doesn't have the characters' names. And this box sort of concerns me. Not because the picture of Robocop is hand-drawn, meaning the robot probably looks nothing like that, but also because the big martial arts label. Robocop is an action movie, but hardly martial arts. Um, and you'd think adding a vampire to it would make it horror, not martial arts. The film opens on some army guys leading a prisoner through some jungle graveyard when they open a casket to find snakes. I'm not sure what they were hoping to find, but they try shooting the snakes, which only results in one flying out of the casket at them. You ever fuck up so bad your fuck up shouldn't even have been physically possible? Then they accidentally unseal the grave of a vampire. And um, the Chinese hopping vampire, or Jiangxi, as they call it, is a common Chinese mythical creature, but goddamn they always look so ridiculous. <laughs> Hey guys, there's like a vampire three yards away? Maybe not the best time. Anyway, the vampire kills the two army men and the other guy gets away. Maybe this is an inane comment, but these names are almost the uncanny valley of American names. Harry Miles, Joe Brown... They're trying too hard to make it seem like Americans are actually involved with this movie. They've also got a lot of white text on bright backgrounds. And they've been taking scoring lessons from Terminator Shocking Dark. During the credits, we get a glimpse at some cops chasing down a drug ring. Listen, we must find a way to handle Tom, that goddamn anti-drug agent. Did he seriously just say that? Boss, what are your plans then? I've employed a Dallas. He'll train vampires to deal with him. Oh, this guy's lost it. <laughs> Ken, what the hell are you doing here? I hope you haven't come to check up on me now, have you? Oh, it's super easy to talk through your teeth like this. So their plan is to hide cocaine in the tombs of vampires. No way that'll make them angry. Oh look, it made them angry. 
And these two guys get beat up by a bunch of corpses until another guy comes in and beats up the corpses. It's weird to me that, despite Godfrey Ho's obsession with marketing this to Americans, he still left in stuff that I only understand because I read the Wikipedia article on Jiangxi. Like, these are talisman written by Taoists which immobilize them while stuck to their heads. But to the average American viewer, these are just pieces of paper and there's no reason these things start moving when the papers fall off. <sighs> Can't believe every piece of media isn't targeted directly at my demographic. This is bullshit. I'm sorry to bother you, is everything alright? Go, it's okay. Everything's under control. I'm starting to get the sense they only had a few guys around to dub this. And jeez, what they're saying doesn't even match up with their facial expressions. Bodies? I guess you're still the boss. This is like fucking Kung Pao. Guys, guys, look at the happy face. The Taoist in charge of making the vampires prepares to show them off, and I'm pretty sure every single scene with guys working for the drug dealer has had different people. You know, usually you only show a few henchmen so the audience doesn't get confused or make them all visually distinct enough that you can show multiple, but people will know they're still one of the bad guys. Anyways, the Taoist gives them garlic, which is not one of the many, many ways Wikipedia lists to kill a Jiangxi. And it's definitely more American-influenced, so I guess Godfrey Ho just wants to confuse everyone. Then the ghost of an American woman shows up and chastises them for turning her husband into a vampire, claiming that their love was forbidden in this life, so they sought to be together in the afterlife. But his soul is now damned, which is also much more American vampire than Jiangxi. Though to Godfrey Ho's credit, the mythology of the Jiangxi has skewed more towards the western vampire thanks to the long arm of imperialism. I know that's exactly what you expected me to talk about in a review of a movie called Robo Vampire. Orientals are a stubborn race, and both his parents opposed our marriage. Whoa, okay. I've never really been offended by the term Oriental. It's just too antiquated for me to consider it a real racial slur. But to call them stubborn people, I think, is actually racist. Hate to break it to you, Godfrey Ho, but you are racist towards Chinese people. Her heart is set on revenge, but the Taoist sends her lover after her. And why does he have a crappy gorilla mask? Everyone else just has green face paint and maybe like a little makeup. Peter's funeral truly was the saddest when, in front of all of us, his face decayed into a gorilla mask. But she shows off a bit of leg and the power of boners is stronger than Taoist magic. Although he could already see her tits through that shirt. But I mean, you know, maybe he has a leg fetish. That's, that's a perfectly normal thing for me to have him to have. So the Taoist agrees to marry them if they agree to work with the drug smugglers. And finally, after 20 minutes, the cop plot line comes back in. They get exactly 16 seconds before we move on to the next scene. Yeah, but cops were never a big part of Robocop. I mean, they're in the next scene along with a bunch of military men, but it doesn't really advance their story nor develop them as characters. In fact, one of them dies. That's what made Murphy such a great character. The film spent absolutely no time establishing who he was or what his relationships were before immediately killing him. This dude got so little introduction, I didn't even know his name was Tom until after he was dead. Tom, my buddy. Of course we know the story. Cop dies, let's make him a cyborg man. Let's get a look at that fucker. As predicted, looks nothing like the Robocop on the cover. Uh, looks like the crappy Robocop costume your mom made for you the night before Halloween. Impossible. There must be some traitors on Bill's side, yes? Our latest drug deal was strictly confidential, but that damn cop Tom busted us. It sure is weird that all of the characters talk so awkwardly and add unnecessary phrases to all of the sentences that they say. That in my opinion, all anti-drug agents should be terminated. At once. 
No, 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 you're mixing franchises. I think you mean should be robocopped all at once. Then some more characters we've never been introduced to go into a church looking for hidden drugs. Hey, the drugs! I really like this movie. They try to kill the priest, but a woman is protecting him. She dives out a window, and that is so obviously not her, it's not even funny. Actually, it's extremely funny. Come on, you could have at least gotten the right hair length or color. What is this? She runs out of bullets and gets captured, and some hilariously blunt exposition ensues. And as for our flourishing drugs business, all we do is supply an ever-increasing Western demand. As you're no doubt aware, being a narcotics agent, you... Get out of here. Lord, you said I could have her now. Mm -hmm. He didn't seem very upset about that. And that's why you always make sure to secure your prisoners first. Then the bad guy tries to rape her. Oh, oh, I know how this one ends. Robocop shows up and shoots him and the cuts away? And it's strongly implied that she actually is raped. But shooting people in the dick! Stop! <laughs> Drop your weapons. Come with me. Ah, Robo Vampire. So effective, villains who've never seen or heard of him before surrender. Some drug dealers are stopped by the military, but they have the power of vampires. And here's one advantage Jiangxi have over vampires. Gun arms! Would you believe that's not a part of the Chinese mythology? At least, not that my very surface level research could come up with. You'd think if they did have gun arms, though, the very first thing you'd get on Google was... Jiangxi! Have gun arms. But Nobocop shows up and scares them off. And what's up with all the beanies? It's like a gang of Eric Cartman. Anyway, the captured woman is being Chinese water tortured. Um, my understanding of Chinese water torture was that your head was secured so that water would drip on the same spot over and over again. This kind of seems to defeat the purpose if you can just move your head out of the way. Although, as we've determined, these people aren't the best at securing their prisoners. Then there's an arm wrestling contest that leads into a knife fight that leads into a shootout. You guys gotta understand, most of the time I am exactly as confused as you are. Anyways, the good guy who's not Robo Vampire Cop captures one of the many, many bad guys. He nearly kills him, but this woman just fucking shows up and says, No, don't. Who are you? Why do characters just keep showing up in the movies I review with no explanation? Don't characters show up on your show without any introduction? Alright, fair. Bootleg Matthew McConaughey and his gang start a fire, and I guess they were just hoping Robonaut would just walk into it. Yeah, that plan doesn't work. A well-preserved film indeed. Then the vampire strategy is, hug his leg like a small child. He has a hard time killing any of them with that gun, though. Yeah, too bad they didn't arm him with... A mirror, items made from wood of a peach tree, a rooster's call, jujube seeds, hooves of a black donkey, vinegar, a thread stain with a concoction of black ink, chicken's blood, and burnt talisman, the blood of a black dog, a stonemason's owl, an axe, a broom, the ability to hold one's breath, or dropping a bag of coins. Then they shoot him with a bazooka. Emergency! Save the robot at once! Nah, bro, he's dead. I'm afraid he's short-circuited. Um... If by short-circuited you mean blown to smithereens, you'd be better off starting over with a new robot. Then two random drunks fight the bad guys. You ever get the sense adding Robocop was an afterthought? Like, these guys genuinely hand the bad guys' asses to them, and only after they've done that does one of their backup go, 
hey, let's fucking shoot them. But by that point, the renegade team that does not consist of Robert Cop shows up and guns them down. I you know it's occurring to me now that there are just as many random pointless good guy teams as there are random pointless bad guy teams. All right. <laughs> it's a great view. You should bathe more often. You bastard. Don't you have any manners? Just go away. Ooh, looks like the bad guy's not the only one going down for sexual harassment. Oh, but she likes it because he's the good guy. Then in one of the most bizarre and hilarious scenes, the monkey vampire and the ghost lady are being all lovey-dovey. Roboslop shows up and they say, Don't kill us, we love each other. You can kill us, but wait till our love's consummated. And then Roboman remembers being in love. My bad, guys. This is just like Robocop. Non-Robocop and the girl who just fucking showed up are on the run from the bad guys and end up in the river. But they get captured. Luckily, the renegade team is on it. And there's some chick with the bad guys who decides to help them. Who is this? Have we seen her before? I swear, they just made this shit up as they went along. Then we get to a climax full of amazingly cheesy action. As it should be. The downside is there's a lot of screaming. Eventually the good guys win out, but there's one battle left. Robocop vs. Vampires. Which would have been a much more appropriate title considering the robot isn't a vampire. Even though the showdown was happening in the jungle, a vampire escapes to downtown, so this can look even remotely like a Robocop film. So what do you say we find somewhere quiet to be alone now? Don't blow me away by saying you don't love me anymore. Hmm? Well? Does this mean you don't love me anymore? fuck are these characters? I swear to god, the room has nothing on this movie. Anyway, the American ghost uses her Spider-Man powers on the Taoist who controls the vampires and they fight. But she pulls the ultimate cheap move. Taking off her shirt. No stop, my one weakness. And with two minutes left in the film, there's still shit happening, so suddenly the gun does work on vampires. And the ghost rips out the Taoist's eyes and Robo-Policeman burns him with the shotgun that's apparently now a flamethrower. The end. And that's Robo Vampire. Exactly what you expected from a Robocop vampire movie. Actually, I really enjoyed this film. I was worried it was gonna end up like some of the other foreign knockoffs I've looked at, but this is so bad it's good. Sure, it drags in parts, but the ridiculous line deliveries and absurd visuals kept me laughing throughout it. And come on. It's Robocop fighting Chinese jumping vampires. How can you say no to that? I guess what I'm trying to say is... I'd buy that for a dollar. I already used that joke. I swear I've already used that joke. Anyways, until next time, I'm Matt. And this has been Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show.
it looks nothing like Yes. Laugh, you insepid fool. Laugh while you still can, for soon my revenge will be at hand. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs>